Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to this study today. My name is Aaron Kevin Irvin, and I want to talk about the introduction of the book of life. Okay. And this is also in the memory of James, Dr. James Wickstrom, and he was a, a very good friend of mine, more like a best friend. Because ever since in my early 20s, he has groomed me, and he was giving me teachings, and offering me to go and study to prove him wrong. So, if he was here today, I would be even more groomed. So, as I, as I uh, start the book of Genesis 126, and you can follow me too, and I'm going to give you some little bit of descriptions of the words and meanings especially in the Shuranka coordinates. So I want to start from Genesis 126 because that's when they say that man was created. Okay, Genesis 126. And Yahweh said, I don't say God, I don't say Lord, I don't say Jesus because all those are just pronouns. They're just titles. They don't mean anything. It doesn't give the real actual name. Because Yahweh says, by my name you shall be saved. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, and of the cattle of the earth. Because there was cattle and other fowls that were created here. Because I, I did skip the actual beginning of the creation. We all know that Yahweh created the heavens and the earth. But I'm going to where he's created the man. Now let's look up man in the strong coordinates. <clears throat> if you have a strong coordinates, it is just a perfect tool to understand word for word. Because you can't just read it as it is all the time. You have to go from word to word. What man are we talking about here? Well, that's what I want to talk about today. What man? See, if you go to Strong's 582 in the Hebrew, and this is how you read it. This is, this is how you read it. I'll give you a little bit of introduction on that. You look at the words, the meanings, what word you're looking for. And what scripture that is the word saying it in. And you look to the right side and it'll give you a number. And it'll say Greek or Hebrew. And then you go back to the book here. Where it starts off in Hebrew and Chaldee Dictionary. Or Greek. But we're going to go 582 in the Strong's. And right here in 582 it says Enosh. Well, how do you have Enosh before Adam? See, that's a complicated deal going on here. Well, who's the Enosh? That can't be Adam because Adam had a son and child generations to come was Enos from Canaan. Not Enosh. The Enosh was known as the man, the male and female. Because if you read it, Enosh, another blood, thirsty, certain, age, husband, mortal, man, people, person, servant, stranger. Well, if that man that was created that he's talking about in Genesis 1.26, Yahweh wouldn't say that he is a stranger. Yahweh's not going to say that, let's create this man, he is a stranger. Of course he's a stranger, because that's not Adam. Adam is not a stranger. He is the son of Yahweh. Because if you look in Strong's, or excuse me, if you look in the book of Luke 3, chapter verse 38, chapter 3, verse 38, it'll tell you that Adam is the son of Yahweh. They put God, but it's Yahweh. Adam is the son of Yahweh. So if Adam is the son of Yahweh, he would not say that is a stranger, they're a tradesman, 
or a bloodthirsty person. Yahweh's not going to say that about his own people, his covenant people. So who were these races? They were the other kinds that been here 20, 30, 40,000 years. Not the Adam kind, the pre-Adamic, because that's in Strong's 119 to show blood in the face. When I get angry or angry or embarrassed, I show blood in the face. That is the Adamic race. And you can't find in an Adamic race that is more than 8,000 years old. And the science can't prove it. They can't find it. And they're so mad about it because they're, they're, they're trying to prove that we all came from one race. And we didn't. Because it's common sense to think that if I was white and the girl I went with was white, is my baby going to come out white? Hmm? Can't correct me on that because you know for a fact that it's going to come out white. So there we have it. There, there's a clue to let you know that there was other races before Adam kind. The reason why is because in Genesis 1... Where he said that there was no man to till the ground. That's when Adam came in the Genesis chapter 2. Because there was no man to till the ground. Well, there was Enosh already here. Why is till so important? The word till. That's why I'm saying to you, you have to have a tool, a wrench, because this book's like a motor. You gotta have the tools to fix everything in this book because the Catholics, the secondhand Catholics and the and so on, have taken these books from the time of Nicaea, during the time of Constantine, known as a man, and took in these books and rewritten them for their own gain. See that's why they brainwash you and says God and not Yahweh, because they take out God they take out Yahweh and put in God and Lord. They're just just they're just titles. They don't want you to worship the actual name of Yahweh. Because and another witness of that is Jeremiah. And in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 8, says that these wise men have took the pen of the scribes, scribes means publisher or writer, has made this book in, in vain to their own gain. They're not wise. <clears throat> okay, let's go to to uh, the end where he's saying chapter 2 and thus the heavens and the they were finished and all the host of them see and it was finished you have Genesis 126 where he created Enosh and then now here chapter 2 we have he's finishing his days He's having his seventh day where he finished the creation. And on the seventh day, Yahweh had ended his work, and he had made, and he rested on the seventh day, and from all his work, in which he had made, and Yahweh blessed it, the seventh day, and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which Yahweh had created and made. Here we go. And these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day of Yahweh and made the earth and every plant and every field before. And see, here we go. We have, And then upon the earth there was not a man to till the ground. There you have it, to till. Now I'm going to take you to the straw coordinates. Let me give you a dignified word of the till. Now, it's in Hebrew, and it's going to be 5647, if you want to follow with me, 5647 in the Hebrew.
Okay, at the top of the right page here is 5647. There's a prime work, or prime to work, prime root word is to work, to imply to serve, bondsman, bond service. And this is to come, to bring to pass, to serve, to become, servant, service, till, transgress. I don't think Yahweh is going to say that uh, there was no man to transgress. I think Yahweh is going to say at the very end of here, it's going to say, a worshiper. There was no worshiper on the ground that Yahweh created these Enosh race, that there was none of the Enosh race that wanted to worship Yahweh. So that's why you have in Genesis 2, where Adam came and it was formed, from the four elements of the earth, and then Yahweh breathed breath in his nostrils to give him the spirit, because we're the only ones, the Adamic and Strong's 119, carry the red and ruddy, the blush in the face. He breathed in his nostrils, and he gave him the spirit of life, and then became Adam. See? Adam isn't the first man. Adam is the second that came here on earth to tell, to worship, to get worship for Yahweh. And not only that, his people, the Adamic race, were before here, before the foundations of this earth. Now is that why he said, let us make man in our image? Well, who's us? Was he talking to us, the Adamic race? Let's make him in our image? Or was it the angels? Okay, now we know who's formed and who's created. Those are different from the other races. You can't have Enosh before Adam. Because they want to completely say everyone came from Adam. Well, then who's Enosh? I mean, am I wrong or right? Does it say it or does it not? Does it say it in the Strongs? It surely does. Now there's an introduction of... The separate. There's two different races. Now there's only one that Lucifer attacked. And that is the Adamic race. Because if Lucifer wants to be like God. And I'm going to give you an example to make this sense for you. To get it to make sense. Okay. I want you to understand that. If Lucifer was like a God. Well. In Luke chapter 3, verse 38, Adam, Adamic, is the son of Yahweh. So now he, Lucifer, wants to have a son too. So what did Eve eat? Well, let's find out if she really did eat anything. Because I can prove that to you in the Strong Concordance. Beguiled. And eat does not mean the same thing you think today. In this English standard uh, world today. It's not in the same literature bracket. Okay, let's go to verse 13. I'm going to start there. I'm trying not to, you know, because everyone knows what was going on with Lucifer, the serpent, and Adam and Eve. They were, they were going to be beguiled. It was going to be Eve beguiled first, and then uh, Eve simply deceived Adam into hearkening unto her voice and did also eat. Okay. And Yahweh said unto the woman, What is this have you done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Well, 
Let's find out what she really said. We'll pull the stronger coordinates out. That's our tools for our motor here. Let the say go to Strong's. And it's going to be. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're going to look up beguiled. What beguiled means, okay? The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. No, excuse me. We're going to look up the word eat, since I'm already in a Strong's for eat. Because this is what, it's in Strong's 398. The prime root to eat, burn up, consume, devour, eat, feed, to dine in, deed, plenty, lay. So how would lay, lay would fit in that verse? Well, let's, let's just use lay, because the serpent beguiled me and I did lay. Let's start there, lay. I kind of went a little bit backwards there. I pulled up the wrong number in the shrunk of coordinates. It's going to be in 5377. Go in the book of Strong's in the Hebrew 5377. <clears throat> and it is called Nasha. Nasha. A prime root to lead astray mentally, to delude, or to morally to seduce. Well, you can't use beguile in here because that's the same word that they're using, beguile. we got to have a, a definition of beguile, so it can't be beguile. To seduce, to beguile. Well, ain't that strange that that seduce is the same connection with beguile? So now let me read it for you. Now we have beguile. You can take it or leave it. I'm going to read it. Remember what I said lay. To lay with. Eat also means to lay. And Yahweh said, what has this you done? And the woman said, the serpent seduced me and I did lay with. Now is that the correct way of saying it since she has to... She has to suffer more childbearing because she used her private part when she laid with the serpent and had a son because she had gotten a man from the Lord. She ain't getting a man from, from Yahweh. She got a man from the other God that's supposed to be wannabe God, Lucifer, the serpent. So this is physical. This is all physical. It ain't, this ain't spiritually. You didn't eat a fruit and it was spiritually. All of a sudden now your eyes are opened. Because why would it say, why would it say here in Genesis 3.15, and I will put enmity, that's hatred, between you and the woman and between her seed and your seed and her seed. Well, if you want to go look up in the Strong Concordance what seed means, it'll make more sense if you go back to 13 to say, the serpent seduced me and I did lay with. So if you lay with somebody, you get them pregnant, what happens? What? She has a seed and he has a seed. What's seed mean? Let's figure it out. Let's find it. We're going to go to Strong's here, in our Strong's, and we're going to go in Hebrew, and we're going to go to uh, 2233 in the Hebrew.
And it is called Zara. Zara. Seed, fruit, plant. Well, there you go. It can be a fruit. But it also says carnally, carnally, child of fruitful seed. Well, how does she have Cain that was a murderer from the beginning? Just like the John 8, 44. Because their father was a murderer from the beginning. So there you go. You have Lucifer that has a seed. And she has a seed. And you wonder why Cain murdered Abel. Because Abel was of the seed of Adam. He was of the righteous seed. He was not of Yahweh. Because we're the seed of Yahweh. We are the... Because he, he, he took his breath and breathed into Adam. The breath of life and the spirit in Adam. And when she lay with the serpent, there, there was no connection of Yahweh. You see? There's a two seed line war going on here. This is your introduction of the book of life. The other race, and you have Adam and Eve and their offspring. <clears throat> so now, I want to get to the point that in John, 1 John 3.12... If you want to go to your books in John 3.12. Not St. John. 1st John. In 1st John. Chapter 3. Verse 12. Not as Cain. Because Cain. Was the first child. From the seed. During the time of Eve. She has a seed, and serpent has a seed. A child of their generation. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Who is the wicked one referred to? Sataniel, Lucifer, the serpent. And slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's was righteous. See, I'm saying the Adam, kind, are righteous. That was Abel. The righteous. That's a witness to let you know that the Cain race is of the seed of the serpent. There's your two set two seed line war there. They're the Kenites, because if you want to go look up Cain, you can do it right now. Take your strongs. And I want you to look up Cain. Cain, and it's going to be in Hebrew, and it's going to be 7014. 7014. <clears throat> Blue ray past it. Right here. Cain. Cain. A play upon a village affinity. Cajun, the name of the first child, the name of the first child of who? Lucifer, the serpent. Also place of Palestine, they are an oriental tribe. Because if you go in the Strong's and you look up 119 in the Hebrew, and it shows that Adam is to show blood in the face, the red, the ruddy, to be made died when we embarrassed, when we are angry. But tell me when an oriental tribe to show blood in the face. They are an oriental tribe. Now didn't Cain go east, eastern, or eastern, and Eve and Adam went to western. They went different ways. So there you go. They're the eastern people, and they were oriental tribes over there. 
and built a city and called it Enoch. See, now there's, there's a difference now. There's two Enochs, but Cain had an Enoch before Adam. Adam later on had Enoch. Enoch walked with Yahweh, not Cain's Enoch. <laughs> See, they got the, the Catholics got everyone twisted there. Because all the teachers they try to they, they put Enoch as that one person. It's not the one person. They're two different race. Because to show blood in the face, that is me, I'm a white Caucasian, because if you look at the map. The Israelites went around the Caucasus Mountains and those other strangers called them Caucasoids. Latter today, Caucasians. Not Kenites. The Kenites are of Cain. I'll get to another teaching of how Cain, his seed line, had married into a white Caucasian race during the time of Esau. That's your Edomites that we have here today in America that own the banking system, that owns and runs the governments, that owns the media, the entertainment system, and they brainwash everyone, in the children especially. They're thinking that they have no respect for their parents. They don't dress well. They dress like perverts. They dress like slots and whores. Excuse me online, but that's just the way it is. And you wonder why there's rape and murder going on. Because your little girls are out there dressing like little, little, uh, how do we want to put it? Whores? That's the only word I can, that's whoredom. It's written in a book, so it can't be wrong for me to say it. They're, they're playing whoredom. They're playing Babylon. So those are your Edomites that are running around saying, that, oh, you can mix race because if I go back to the Genesis 1, seed after seed of its kind. Why? Because, you know me say why seed after seed? And, and it's because it's the child after child of the same kind. Not of different seed. Not of a mixed race. You, you know why Father Yahweh said that no mamzer, a bastard race, can enter the kingdom of Yahweh? Because they are a mixed race. That's why Noah was saved, because he was also a drunkard, but he kept his race pure in Yahweh diminished all the other people that was in mixed multitudes. That's why he said take two of one, male and female, because everything that he took was a pure race. I just want you younger generation to understand and know this. And seriously, from, from heart to heart, he wants his sheep and to know and understand you are the Israelites, Jacob, Israel, known the man Jacob, Israel, the white Western European people, and the nations that are of, don't matter if you're in Germany, France, Sweden, however, white Caucasian, blonde hair, blue eyes, green, maybe brown, brown's, brown's good, but when you have the black eyes, and there's, there's, there's just no color into them, you're not a white Caucasian, I don't care if you look white, you're not a white Caucasian, you have been mixed. Let me explain the tree, the, the tree itself, how Lucifer was, was a symbology of a tree of good and evil. Because in, in Ezekiel chapter 31, Ezekiel chapter 31, and this is a symbology of, 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 of the kind people. Now I'm going to read it to you. It's in chapter 31, and it's the prophecy against the Pharaoh. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the third month, in the first day of the month, that the word of Yahweh came to me, and saying, Son of man, speak unto the Pharaoh, the king of the Egypt, and to his multitude, 
whom are they like the greatness? And behold, the Syrian is a cedar in the Lebanon with the fair branches and with a shadowing shroud and a height stature as his top was among the thick bows. The waters made him great. The deep set him up high with his her rivers running around his plants and set out her little rivers unto all the trees of the field. See, he's, he's saying all his people like the trees, all the other trees of the field. See, he's being the symbology of the tree, the like in the midst of the garden. See, he's the king, the pharaoh. He is playing like if he's Lucifer too, just, just like the Vatican, the Pope. I have every reason to set against the Pope because all he is is giving false teachings. He's accepting homosexual. He's accepting all the abominations of the earth when they tell you it's okay to eat pork and it's not. See, this Pharaoh had branches and we always refer to him like if he's portraying as Lucifer. See, Therefore his height was exceedingly above all the trees of the field. That's like what the Pope is doing. He's, he's exceeding himself before all the trees like us of the field. That's why in the book of Genesis that you shall eat every fruit, you shall lay with, with every tree of its own kind. Let me get that in your head. The tree itself is the human being. Of Adamic race. And your fruits. Are the genitals. The jewels. Of a man. To spread his seed. Kind. After its own kind. Not kind. After different kind. See the Pharaoh here. Is acting like he's Lucifer. Exceeding above all the other trees. <clears throat> Thus was he fair in his greatness and length of his branches for his root was by the great waters the cedars in the garden of the, of Yahweh could not hide him the fir trees were not like his bows see we're, we're getting a symbology of the tree and this is the symbol of us we're the symbol of trees <clears throat> The fir trees were not like his bows, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches, nor any tree in the garden of Yahweh was like unto him in his beauty. Isn't that Lucifer that is the most beautiful creation, but trains against Yahweh and his law? See, people think that Lucifer is ugly and a big monster, but no. You have it all wrong. And Yahweh, because you has lifted up your, yourself in height <clears throat> and have shot up his top among the thick bows and his heart is filled up with his height. More like the pride. He's, he's, he's getting so much pride because, hmm, I'm like the Pope. I know what's best for you. Kiss my ring. Because he's getting the people to exalt him. When you should be worshiping Yahweh in the kingdom. And I have therefore delivered him into the hand of the mighty one. The heathen, he shall surely deal with him. I have driven him out for his wickedness. <clears throat> I like Ezekiel because it always opens up to me mysteriously. But... Especially in a, in, in a prophecy of the Pharaoh, it is a perfect perfect example of how we're of example of trees. Our fruits that we bear, that we go kind of, we go kind to other kind. We don't go to other races. We go kind after kind. My kind go with the same kind, and. Be fruitful and multiply. But in the midst you shall not eat of, because that was Lucifer knowing the knowledge of good and evil. Because he was the first one to know the good and evil. There's your explanation of the beginning in Genesis. 
seed after its own kind. And it's okay because Yahweh said to Adam and Eve, it's okay to be with every tree that is of the same seed. The kind, the same kind of your kind. Be fruitful and multiply. There's another introduction of the book of life to show you that there's a different meaning when you get out of the tree because everyone thinks it's a tree. And then all of a sudden they say it's an apple because you can't find there's an apple in here. What did she eat? Oh, everyone says it's a fig. No, it's an apple. No, it was a pear. No, she eat, uh, um, she laid with Lucifer, the serpent. And now she had a child. And it killed Abel, and so far on. And I already proved to you the Cain was of the wicked one, the serpent. So that does make sense. Because Yahweh that came to flesh, because if you look in 1 Timothy 3.16, and whoever denies that Yahweh came to flesh and called himself Emmanuel, because if you look in the Hebrew... Emmanuel means God is with us. Well, who's God? Did I just explain? God is Yahweh. Yahweh is with us. Whoever denies that Yahweh came to flesh is the Antichrist. I know one person that does that. I won't say his name online. <clears throat> And see, and here, here's another introduction. <clears throat> A lot of people say John 3.16. I use 1 Timothy 3.16. I like that because Yahweh is giving me that script. He's allowing me to, to see these things in this book to defeat my enemy that's going out there and teaching false heresies. They're lying out of their own hearts. I ain't teaching this out of my own heart. I do it for Yahweh. And I make sure what I'm reading and I do my research before I perform. And tell you what you need to think. I don't tell you what you need to think. See, that's all your, your, your pastors and your preachers. See, I'm not a preacher. I'm teaching, but I'm not a preacher. See, a preacher is someone who is going to take the teachings and go preach it to everyone. I don't care if you take my teachings and preach it, then so be it. That's, that's not in my hands. I wipe that clean. That's in your hands. You go ahead and you proclaim whatever you want to proclaim, but I proclaim Yahweh. Yahweh is my Savior, and He is my Father. He is my God. He is the Almighty. There is no other name above all names but Yahweh. Now, to get forehand here, John 3.16, for God, this is how I'm going to say it, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. No, he didn't love the world. For Yahweh so loved his people, his sheep, he gave his only begotten flesh, his blood, for his sin, for the sin offering, to remarry his people, the sheep. He didn't come to save the world. And he didn't come to say. He didn't come to destroy the law, excuse me. He didn't come to destroy any part of the law. <clears throat> Let's look at Matthew 10, 6. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 10, verse 6. We'll go, we'll go behind. We'll go to five, okay? We'll go to five so we know what we're talking about here. These twelve, these twelve disciples 
the uh, three stars, the 12 with the center here, and this star right here, that's the 13th, that's the Levite tribe. That, that, that's, that's the teachers. That's the center. That's the kingdom. So this, this flag here, everyone thinks it's just some, some racist stuff. This is the Jacob Israel, the, the three to the west, three to the east, three to the north, and three to the south. And the, and the eagle, I represent because of loyalty for the tribe of Israel and a, and a loyalty mainly for Yahweh. <clears throat> These 12 disciples, Yahweh, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, the Christ, the light, <clears throat> has sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go in not into the way of the Gentiles. Because those were the those were like the Edomites. And into the city of Samaritans enter not, because those were the mixed multitudes. But go rather to the lost sheep. That's the tribe of Jacob, Israel. So that sounds like it's racist right there. If he said, go only to his lost sheep. And his lost sheep goes down to the, to the generations from, from all the way to Jacob, to Seth, to Adam. Because Emmanuel promised Adam that he will come to redeem the original sin that was created from the time when Eve had laid with the serpent. When that she has done that, he has to die on that cross, on that tree, to remarry his people. And he's not going to go and say, go tell the world. <clears throat> You want me to tell you why he's not going to tell the world? Because if you go to the book of James, let's go to the book of James, chapter 4. <clears throat> if I can get there pretty soon. Come on, James. <laughs> Here we are. James chapter 4. <clears throat> and I'll read it from the beginning. From whence come wars, and this is talking about also in the end times, fightings among you, and come they not, even of your lust, that war in your members, you lust and have not, you kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain, you fight a war, yet you have not, because you ask not. You ask, you ask and you receive not, because you have asked amiss. Amiss is, is, you do one thing and then you do another. <clears throat> you need, it's like you're neither hot or cold, you, you either be one or the other. <clears throat> that you may consume it upon your lust. You adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that the friendship of this world is the enmity? Didn't I say the enmity is hatred? That the friendship of this world is the hatred with Yahweh. So, gee, I, I want to give you a good explanation why when Yahweh came to flesh... Emmanuel the Christ didn't want to save the world because there's there's enmity that hates Yahweh. And so whoever therefore will be a friend of this world is the enemy of Yahweh. So that you could just take your John 3.16 and blow it away because that's just a scapegoat. That's just your scapegoat to say that everyone came from one because I just proved to you that no one came from the same. So whoever is 
The friendship of this world is the enmity of Yahweh. Read it again. James chapter 4. In another introduction of the book of life, there is no rapture. <clears throat> Since I'm close enough, I'll take you to Revelation chapter 21. Revelation 21, there is no rapture. And I'll prove that to you today. Revelation 21. <clears throat> We're going to go to chapter 8, okay? But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and the sorcerers and the idolaters and all the liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire. Brimstone, which is the second death. So everyone here on earth is going to have their first death before they have their second death. Wait, did he say, wait, did he say a rapture in here? Because it, it, it just says second death. If he says second death, that means you you have to die first to be able to come your second death to be judged and have your second death either you live or you don't maybe i'm not seeing this right because there is no rapture in here let me take you to ezekiel <clears throat> ezekiel chapter 13 okay <clears throat> no didn't want to skip it I'll read the whole chapter for you. And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy and say unto them, they prophesy out of their own hearts. Out of their own hearts. Oh, this is what I think Yahweh said, and this is, this is what I think is right. That's out of your own heart. That's not what the book says. We all have to abide by it. Thus saith Yahweh, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. You have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle the day of Yahweh. You're not preparing your sheep to, to be ready of who their enemy is. They don't even know who their enemy is. And they don't even know who they are. Because in Revelations 2, 9 and 3, 9, that wake up Israel because those who say that they are the IE chosen people are indeed liars, thieves, and murderers. They are the Edomites today. They are the Esau Edom. Esau Edom married the other side race, which was Kenite race. They were the Kenites. That was the seed and offspring of Cain. That was the seed of the wicked one. That's who controls everything today. <clears throat> therefore, saith Yahweh, because you have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore, behold, I am against you, saith Yahweh. And my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and the divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people. Neither shall they be written in the, written in the house of Israel. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am Yahweh. <clears throat> because even because you have seduced my people saying peace peace when there is no peace see all these teachers want to be teachers out here and pastors saying oh peace peace all you have to do is tell everybody to to be saved all you have to do is believe in God 
That's not true. And God's just a title. No one wants to do their literature. <clears throat> Let's go to verse 18 on chapter 13, and I'm going to say this to you. This is for men and women. And say this unto Yahweh, Woe, woe unto women that sew pillows to all harm, armholes, and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. Will, will you hunt the souls of my people? And will you save the souls alive that come unto you? <clears throat> and will you pollute me among my people for the handfuls of barley and pieces of bread? Souls that should not die to be saved. The souls that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lies. This is about the rapture now. Wherefore, thus saith Yahweh, I am against your pillows. You were hunt the souls to make them fly away. We're going to fly away into heaven. It's going to be a rapture. Well, didn't I just prove that to you in uh, Revelations 21? That there's a second death. There, there's no escaping your first. There is no rapture. Your rapture is when they... When, when you die and the silver cord's cut and then you go back to the Father and you're judged. And then you receive either your life or your second death. And your second death is permanent, by the way. <clears throat> your kerchiefs also I will tear and deliver my people out of your hand. And they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted, and shall know that I am Yahweh. Because you make my people think to fly away with their souls. Let me give you a couple, couple of scriptures if you want to go with me today. Just so I'm, I'm correctly right. I said before Jeremiah verse 8. Well, chapter 8 verse 8. And I'm going to read that to you. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 8. And you go to verse 8. How do you say we are wise? And the law of Yahweh is with us. Look, certainly in vain may he it. The pen of the scribes is it is in vain. The wise men are shamed. They are dismayed and taken. They have rejected the word of Yahweh. They have rejected the word of Yahweh. Because they knew who the Kenites were. And they knew who the Jacob Israel is. That's the white Western Europeans. Because East... Or, Cain went to east. They're the eastern. We're the western. <clears throat> so today I give you an introduction of who we are as a race, the racial identity. And if you want to look up one more chapter, and it's in Genesis, chapter 5. And it is the book, The Generations of Adam. So if Adam is to show blood in the face, then this book is for the Adam race. I'd like to close this little study today. If I have not given enough or more, no, I have to give more explanations for something, then maybe you should... Write me and give me a little reply and something I need to study further. Because there's a lot of false prophets out there and I wouldn't want to steer you in the wrong way. I love Yahweh and I love my family and I have loved James Wickstrom, Dr. James Wickstrom. And I've known him 11 years. I went out and I studied and I was trying to prove him wrong. But he was calling him the Jew. They were, James was calling them the Jews. Well, they are the Jews. But they're the Edomites. 
I'm going to call them the Edomite Christ Killers. Because if you want to take a look in uh, Sarah Silverman. Yes, Sarah Silverman. She's an Edomite. Yeah, why don't you think that she's all sexual, sexual and perverted? And she said that if Emmanuel the Christ was here again, that we will murder him again. That's your Edomite people today, Jacob Israel. You are the Israelites. Not Jews. We are, see, there's no more Jews. They're, they're, they're not he, there's no more Hebrew anymore. They don't call Hebrew. Because when Jacob and Yahweh wrestled, I will not call you Jacob no more, but Israelite. Jacob Israel. You will have 12 of many nations and them to come. 12 sons and daughters. By four wives. And you know what's really funny? That Ishmael had the same also. Have 12 sons. And Ishmael were the ones that we're fighting over there in Iraq today. They're the second cousins of the white race. Just like they got us in the Civil War, fighting our own brothers and sisters. That's your democracy. That's all the liberalism. That's all the Jewism. That's all the Edomites. <laughs> They're the ones who are pulling up all these wars, and we're blaming everybody else besides the Edomites. They've stolen our money. They've given you this filthy cotton money. They've taken our, our daughters and, and our sons, and they make them go out to battle for undeclared wars. <clears throat> so I want you to think about this, you white Western European people. I'm not playing a racist game. We are the covenant people by race, racial covenant by Yahweh. We are his people. We are the lost sheep of the pasture. Now I'm going to call myself a teacher. But I'm also a herdsman. Because I'm trying to get the sheep back to the same pasture that Yahweh had them. Because I love Yahweh and I love his people. We are the builders. We are the... the the ones that build everything, we make population grow. We don't rape and murder because the rape and murder are coming from the other mixed and other races. We came here to fix that ever since the beginning. Ever since the Adam. The Adamic race. There was no worshiper. We came here to help them to worship. I'm not against the blacks, but if they're out there raping our white women, then yes, I would be against. And if the white men are out doing it too, then I'm against them too. They should be hung. All of them. But you white Western European people need to wake up and know who you are and know who your enemy is. Because Yahweh came to flesh and told you in John 8, 44, how to do it. So I'm going to end this lecture today, and this is for Yahweh and teacher Dr. James Wickstrom. So be it.